Watch you guys got another video. Will a mini PC run Linux? I've got a GMK Tech mini PC here. This is the Nookbox uh, M7. Now this does have a Ryzen 7 Pro 6850H processor inside here. Now if you wanted a mini PC, you don't have to go and spend something like $347 like this one. Uh, this one has everything you need, but if you want something cheaper, you can always get one of those to run Linux on it. But we've got this one here, so I'm going to take a look. You've got all your warranty and user manual, your VESA mount right here. Also, you've got your HDMI cable, your power brick, your warranty card, and your cable. Depending on where you are in the world, they will give you a plug for this particular power brick for your mini PC. Now, this is quite a powerful mini PC, so it should easily run Linux. It's just whether there's any install issues, which I don't think there will be, because Linux pretty much plays well with everything I've installed it on. Now, before we continue with the installation, let's have a quick look at the mini PC itself. So this is it right here. Got a plastic top on here, but there is some ventilation right here to let the air flow through. And we'll show you inside in a second. But on here, we have an Oculink, uh, which is very good for this price point, $347. We have a USB 4 port and two USB 3.2 ports here. That can also be used for charging as well. So we have our audio input here, 3.5 millimeter or audio input there. Some ventilation on the sides on this one here. You can see that nice vent there that's going to allow some airflow to get out of this little system. On the back, let's take a look here. We've got two USB 2.0 ports. We have a HDMI 2.1 8K at 60 hertz and a display port 2.0 at 4K 60 hertz. Two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN ports and a Type-C for USB 4.0 port as well, which also supports data charging and a Kenston lock. This is your VESA mount here if you want to mount this to the back of the monitor. We're just going to quickly take a look inside before we go ahead and install Linux on this system. So just remove the four screws here and we can take a look inside. Now there's going to be hopefully some room for some upgrades on this system. So let's remove the screws here so we can gain access to inside and take a look at some of the parts that you get on this more affordable, I think, mini PC. So we've got a big fan on top there, which is going to allow easy maintenance and cleaning and also replacement of the fan. Now, this is the 16 gigabyte model, and this is DDR5 4800 megahertz dual channel sewed in memory. You can put up to 64 gigabytes of memory inside this unit. There's also room for another M.2 2280 drive inside here, which will take four terabytes. Now this only has a 512 gigabyte drive in it, which also can be upgraded to a four terabyte if you wanted to, if you needed a bigger main Windows or Linux drive. So we've got plenty of upgradability on this system. The SSD NVMe drives are PCI Express 3.0. We have Wi-Fi 6 Plus, plus Bluetooth 5.2. There is your memory module, TWSC, never heard of those before, but that is the actual memory in this system right here. Now, we talked about the CPU earlier. That is the Ryzen 6850H Pro, and it's got eight cores, 16 threads, and it is a 54 watt TDP on there, 16 megabytes as L3 cache, and that is a pretty good processor for any sort of system like Linux or Windows does come with Windows 11 Pro, but you can put Linux on here, as I'll show you a little bit later on. The onboard graphics are AMD Radeon 680M, which is no slouch, pretty good graphics for onboard. We do have a dual cooling fan system on here, and it does support four screen displays using the HDMI DP, which is your display port, and two USB 4.0 ports. You can use all those for displays if you want to, if you want to put four displays on here. So let's take a look and get... Uh, the operating system installed on here. Now, see someone in the comments section talking about the Rhino Linux build, and I wanted to take a look at it, and someone was mentioning it in the comments. I don't know who that was, but I'm pretty sure if it was you, you'll know it was you that left the comment. So I'm going to go ahead and download this, and we're going to drop this onto our Ventoy USB and get this installed on the system. Now, you can use any Linux distro you want, Zarin OS, Mint or any of those other ones, there's plenty out there to choose from and they're all pretty decent. So if you want to use a cheaper mini PC, you can also do that as well. You can pick those up for about £100 or $100, depending where you are in the world. We're going to download this version right here. 
We're going to drop that onto our Ventoy USB drive and we'll boot to it and we'll get this installed onto this mini PC. Now, I'm pretty sure that it's going to install pretty well and it's going to be quick and there's going to be no reboots during the installation process, which is one thing I like about installed in Linux. So I'm going to come right down here. You can see the Zorin OS on here. I'm not going to do that one today. I'm going to choose the Rhino Linux right here and we're going to go ahead and boot into normal mode right here. And we should now boot up and we should be seeing this screen. So I'm going to try or install Rhino and you should see it loading up on the screen right here. Now, once we get to the desktop part here, we can then click on the install to install it if we want to. And I just want to quickly show you what it looks like in case you're not interested on the install part. So there we have it right here. A really nice looking build. I really do like the look of this and feel of it. It's based on Ubuntu. So it's pretty easy to use. And again, it's going to be easy for Windows users if you're transitioning over to Linux as well. So we can see here, welcome to Rhino Linux. Now the print is going to be pretty small here, but all I'm doing is selecting my language here, which is British English. And I'm going to click next and it's going to say, where am I located? And it's London, Europe. So I'm going to say next. And I'm also going to choose my keyboard layout, which is United Kingdom, and that's fine. And now it wants me to choose what I want to do with the installation. I'm going to erase the whole drive here. I'm going to select the drive at the top. And the reason why it's pretty small here, because I'm on a 4K monitor. So I'm just going to quickly go through here and select the erase all of the drive. And we can encrypt the drive if we want to. I'm going to leave the swap and the setup as is. So and then click next. And it's going to go ahead and install this after we've set up our user account. So we just have to put a username in here. So I'm gonna quickly put Brightek in here and we can then push next and it will start the install process. And once you're done, you should see something looking like this. It did install in one go. There was no reboots, no issues whatsoever. Now you can just go through the setup page here and select what you want. I'm just gonna quickly select uh, something here and then get through this and show you what it looks like. Now, what the good thing is, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on a brand new uh, mini PC like I've used right here, then by all means, go and find yourself a cheaper, older type mini PC. And I'm pretty sure you can find these pretty cheap nowadays. Sometimes they have flash deals on mini PCs where you can pick up a brand new one for as little as £150 or $180. And you can install Linux on that box as well. And again, if you're looking for something that is not super expensive then you can do that so what i'm going to say as well is some people were talking about the performance gains that you'll get from linux really to be honest the cpu is exactly the same and the memory speed is going to be the same and also the data bus on that computer is going to be the same the only thing that you're going to see that is uh, better than Windows is the optimized operating system which utilizes the hardware better than what Windows does on some applications and some games and things like that. If we're gonna split airs, basically some things Windows does better than Linux, some games you might see better performance on Windows and some games you might see better performance on Linux. It just depends. And you can sit there all day arguing to the cows come home what operating system's best, but use whatever you want to use and what's uh, best for you and your system. Anyway, we're at the desktop now and we've got our settings here. I've just typed setting here and we can see all of the settings. You can gain quick access to these and really nice look and setup of this. Now, of course, you can change the whole look of this if you wanted to, the whole wallpaper stuff. And if you don't like that, you can change all that just like you can in Windows. And there we have all our applications and there's three pages of these. Sorry that the screen is a little bit small. I've got this plugged into a 4K TV and I should have probably thought about that and changed the resolution size, but hey ho. Anyway, so you can install pretty much anything you want here. And we also have our browser here and you can install other browsers if you want to. Here is your uh, wallpaper right here. It's got Firefox pre-installed. There is your files looks just like windows but it is linux basically the same sort of layout really it's where you're going to gain access to all of your photos and documents and things like that just like you would on a windows based system you've got your terminal window right here 
as well. If you want to enter the terminal, you can do. And also we have this area right here, and this is for your system. And again, there's a button at the bottom that says upgrade your system. You can click on this and it will ask you to put in your password for the sign in and it will then go off and start to look for updates for Rhino Linux. And you can see there's a few, so it's going to go ahead and upgrade the system to all of the latest updates for this particular build. I actually quite like this build, actually. It's quite nice. And believe it or not, regardless of what the trolls say in the comments, I actually do quite like Linux, uh, but don't tell the Windows users that. But here we go. AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 6850H Mini PC, Knockbox M7, $347 for the 16 gigabyte 5th 512 gigabyte SSD version. There is a 32 gigabyte RAM version and one terabyte storage. There is all your details right there on the screen. Again, if you're looking to use this as a Windows uh, system, it does come pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro. So if I went ahead and reinstalled Windows 11 Pro on here, it will automatically update and it will be uh, perfectly fine. It would activate and we should be able to put this back to factory settings if I wanted to. But I'm gonna leave this operating system on here and I might even do a giveaway on Discord uh, for all my uh, Discord members who are on there and see whether they want it. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Appreciate the support. I'll catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server. The link's in the video description. Bye for now.